there. Last night we had a very successful wine dinner reflections and we went through a journey through the wineries owned by the Henriot family. Started with the Champagne, who bears the name of the family, Henriot Champagne, Brut Souverain. Very brown, very toasty, very balanced Champagne. Um, the blend is made with a lot of Chardonnay, a lot of Grand Cru. Since 1808, we've had very large vineyard in Chardonnay Grand Cru, so that has defined our style to blend these wines. So because they're the most rare, most expensive, most slow to develop grape varieties, uh, of course, you need a lot more time uh, before the wines are ready. So this one has been aged a lot longer than the vintage wine. Then we move to the outskirts north of Burgundy, at the border with Champagne, basically. We move to Chablis, and we move to William Febvre. William Febvre is known for doing organic, biodynamic wine, very pure, fresh, and mineral, that are faithful to their terroir. And what is the terroir of Chablis? It's oyster fossil chalk, and that gives the minerality of the wine, this stone-like, grilled nose. And um, this wine are very enjoyable, for themselves, round and balanced, but as well with some fresh seafood that answers to this uh, minerality of the wine. At the end, we move to the heart of Burgundy, which are Bouchard Terrefis wine. Uh, basically, Bouchard Terrefis went from father to son for the last nine generations. It all started in 1731, and now we're very well known for our estates in Bonne Premier Cru. We own the Bonne Castle, it's an old medieval fortress since the 15th century. And there we keep 2,000 bottles from the 19th century, so basically before the phylloxera. It's a unique treasure in the world. Sometimes you can find very old bottles. But you never know what kind of uh, transportation storage condition they've been through in auction or on the internet. But us, since 1820, we own the castle. All this bottle is a Meursault Charm, 1846. We have a Montrachet, 1864. We have a Bonne Grève in the Jésus, 1865. So it gives you an idea about the aging potential of this wine. We're killing this wine when they're still very, very young, but already very enjoyable. We have the Bonne du Château, which is a blend of 17 Premier Cru, and they allowed us to do a very uh, round and balanced wine just after a few years of aging. Um, 08 was quite a challenging vintage, but enabled us to get very fresh, uh, very mineral wine with very blanc tannin. We had as well the Meursault Les Clous, uh, it's a village appellation, but very specific, Les Clous is a parcel that is the same altitude as Corton Charlemagne Grand Cru. Same geological structure, Marley, very fresh, very mineral. So not that typical of a rich, mellow, heavy, toasty uh, Meursault, but a lot more uh, mineral and elegant. Especially in 2012, we had very small grapes, um, very aerated bunches, so we could reach a very good ripe without any issue with healthiness. Um, and then at the very end, we had a surprise white, one white and one red that are really our legendary label. We have the Bonne Grève in de l'Enfant Jésus, which is basically um, uh, since 1793, the family bought it after the French Revolution when the religious people were kicked out of their properties. But beforehand, this parcel was owned by none of Bonne. Uh, 1637, a nun from Bonne Marguerite Saint Sacrement. Anyway, got a prediction that a baby king was on his way. And nine months later, Louis XIV was born, and he was the biggest, most famous ever king in France. We call him the Sun King, the Roi Soleil. He built the Versailles Castle. So everybody went to Bonne to thank the nun for the prediction. And one donator donated this four hectare parcel, exactly mid slope, very sandy soil, which is really good because it dries very quickly. And on seven, we had a lot of rain during the summer. Quite cold vintage with a warm terroir enable us to achieve very good balance. It's always a wine that uh, preserve with silky tannin. Uh, as soon as you get the spices and the leather aromas, we wrap it off and put it in the barrels on the fine leaves. Uh, very silky, very elegant wine. And the last one was going back to white, Corton Charlemagne. Le Corton Hill is basically the locker between Côte de Beaune and Côte de Nuit. That's where you find the only red Grand Cru. But this one is the white, Corton Charlemagne, on the east side of the hill, on the Alos Corton side. So it's east orientation, so very fresh. And we are on the top, top of the hill. So there you have a lot of small stone, and there you can wait for a very long time for the wines to reach very good ripe. Especially O9 was quite a warm and dry vintage, so it's the opposite than this one. You have a very cold, 
terroir in very warm vintage. Of course, this one can develop for 50 more years. The idea of the philosophy of the Oreo family is to try to do fine wine faithful to the soil they come from. So I hope this journey through our wines gives you an idea about what we try to do. Okay. Thank you.